Hello and welcome. I'm so grateful that you are here today. Happy Easter. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. What a beautiful day. For it is the day that the Lord has made. We celebrate his resurrection today. It's been a full day for many people. Here, where I am, it's evening. For some of you, it may be already bedtime. For some of you, it may be in the middle of the night. And, well, or whatever time you're joining me, I'm grateful that you have come to join me this day to pray with me and to celebrate and to remember what the Lord has done. I am grateful that you are here. If you're new to the channel, as always, know that you are very welcome. I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and set notifications. And if you find value in this video, please do like the video and share it. Welcome to the Divine Will Prayer Group with Divine Will Era Ministries, a ministry dedicated to evangelizing and growing in the gift of the Divine Will through the writings of Luisa Picaretta under the theological guidance of Father Dr. Joseph Inizzi. Hello, my name is Patricia, and I thank you for joining me today. Let us all give thanks and praise to God as he continues to reveal much to us in these days. For that which we have received in sacred scripture, that which we experience in our own lives, for all of it informs us it's an expression of his love, his mercy, in his word and in his divine will. In today's program, um, we will recall the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ as today is Easter. And whenever we attend Mass, we recall the death and resurrection of our Lord. In today's program, I'll read from Luisa's, Luisa Picaretta's diary from the Book of Heaven, a small portion from volume 23, January 18th, 1928 and volume 25, March 31st, 1929. And I only mentioned that one briefly, only for one little profound snippet, perhaps three paragraphs, but only to give the basis for the point that touched my heart profoundly. And I believe it was as a result of a decision that was made at one point in my life, and that a, it will be a decision that is made during one point in your life as well. And that we, we know and we come ever more fully and profoundly to give and turn our lives over to the Lord. Today, we will also pray from Father Anutzi's Divine Will Prayer Book, the rounds of the soul, the 23rd round in the divine will, the resurrection. What I'd like to point out in that particular um, portion of the, the prayer book at this moment in time, in that is a footnote. And so I'd like to share the footnote first before we begin into the fullness of the program. And why, I mean, where when I was born and I'm already in my senior years. And when I was a child, we were, we, we knew of limbo and we also knew that it was a dance. Um, but in this particular round in the divine will, the 23rd round, it speaks of a footnote that talks of limbo. Louisa affirms that after his descent, Jesus is descended into limbo and resurrection, Jesus did not immediately go to heaven with the holy host of the just souls from limbo, but did so after 40 days. On day 28 in the Virgin Mary, in the kingdom of the divine will, the Virgin Mary reveals to Louisa, I saw my dear son accompanied by this great host of souls leaving limbo and returning to the sepulcher it was the dawn of the third day. Very often he appeared to his apostles and disciples to confirm 
them in the faith and in the certainty of his resurrection. He departed and took flight for the vaults of heaven together with the great host of souls that had come out of limbo. All those present, and we were great in number, saw him ascend. And as he rose on high, a cloud of light removed him from our sight. Now, my child, your mother followed him into heaven and was present at the great feast of the ascension. What Louisa affirms does not contradict sacred scripture, where one reads in Acts chapter 1, verse 3, he presented himself to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And in Matthew chapter 27, verse 52, Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Tombs were opened and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. There's also a footnote um, that speaks of volume 23, January 18th, 1928. And I will share a small portion of that as well. The details, the beauty, the grace, the mercy in God is so good and so gracious and merciful in all things. Um, may God bless our time together that it may be fruitful. May the Lord give us right dis dispositions that we may be of one heart and mind united in the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And as always, let us begin with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, thank you all for joining me today. Let us begin first with this entry from volume 23, January 18th, 1928. The portion, it's a very large reading. Um, some are greater, some are lesser. I'm only going to show a share a portion of this today. As always, I encourage you to read the fullness of the diary entry and ask the Holy Spirit to bring to you what the Holy Spirit would like you to understand and into the depths and the fullness of, of what is needed. In this particular entry, um, the portion that I want to focus on specifically is how the works of God hold hands among themselves and how the manifestations on the divine will will be the gospel of his kingdom. And so we know that we stand on, on the shoulders or the foundation of our forefathers in faith. And, and so that's how we hold hands. And so the works of God, he passes, he, he creates this, this is the foundation. He always builds on the foundation that he had set initially. So he knows where he wants to go and where he wants us to go to follow him. And then he says, well, I've already completed it all. I can only give you so much at once. I'm going to give you this to begin with. And then he continues to build and build and build. And throughout the centuries, he has been building and building and building. And that's what um, all of our, our teachings and the catechism is in, and in the fullness of the treasury of our faith. Um, it, it is built upon what was first laid as a foundation. 
Well, without continuing any further with any additional words, let me pick it up here. Louisa relates, after this, I was thinking, what will be the utility of these writings on the divine will? And she continues to write, and my highest and only good, Jesus, moving in my interior, told me, my daughter, all of my works hold hands, and this is the sign that they are my works, that one does not oppose the other. On the contrary, they are so bound among themselves that they sustain one another. This is so true that having to form my chosen people from which and within which the future Messiah was to be born from that same people, I formed the priesthood that instructed the people and prepared them for the great good of redemption. I gave them laws, manifestations, and inspirations upon which the sacred scriptures were formed, called the Bible, and all were intent on the study of it. Then, with my coming upon earth, I did not destroy sacred scriptures. On the contrary, I supported them, and my gospel that I announced opposed them in nothing. On the contrary, they sustained each other in an admirable way and in forming the new nascent church, I formed the new priesthood that does not detach itself either from sacred scriptures or from the gospel. All are intent upon them in order to instruct the peoples. And it can be said that anyone who did not want to draw from the salutary font does not belong to me because these are the basis of my church and the very life with which the peoples are formed. Now, what I manifest on my divine will and what you write can be called the gospel of the kingdom of the divine will. In nothing does it oppose either sacred scriptures or the gospel that I announced while being on earth. On the contrary, it can be called the support of one and of the other. And this is why I allow and I call priests to come and read the gospel, all of heaven, of the kingdom of the divine fiat. So as to say, as I said to the apostles, preach it throughout the whole world. In fact, in my works, I make use of the priesthood. And just as I had the priesthood before my coming in order to prepare the people and the priesthood of my church in order to confirm my coming and everything I did and said, so will I have the priesthood of the kingdom of my will. Here is the utility of the many things I have manifested to you, the many surprising truths, the promises of the so many goods and I must give to the children of the Fiat Voluntas Tua. They will be the gospel, the basis, the inexhaustible font from which all will draw the celestial life, the terrestrial happiness, and the restoration of their creation. Oh, how happy they will feel, those who, with yearning, will drink in large gulps from these fonts of my knowledges because they contain the virtue of bringing the life of heaven and of the banishing of any unhappiness. This is just a portion. As I said, there's much that proceeds and there's much that follow. But this is the portion that I wanted to highlight primarily because that particular reading is part of the what is in the 23rd round in the divine will, the resurrection. So it speaks of, highlighted especially, my, I love, pardon me, you appear to Mary Magdalene and the apostles to, to, to beseech you to make your divine will known to priests so that as new apostles, they may make it known to all the world. So as it had been done before, Jesus reveals that now he's going even deeper and that there's another depth and another layer and another building upon the foundation that had first started. 
So that helps us to understand what, what Jesus had done and then helps to explain further by going into the footnote to, he, to read just a portion of, of what is contained in that particular writing. But I believe that it all has to do with there's this foundation of the priesthood and that God has set the order and that we are to be in order in our place and we each ha he has a design on each of our lives that we have been given a particular office, a responsibility, a role to fulfill. And we all have unique ones and we all have different ones. And as you know, Father Inuti has his unique role and how he is doing that in such a great measure and, and just the immense amount of work and energies that are required in order to have him um, continue to use how he was formed and, and all of the gifts and skills and knowledges and teachings and and degrees and languages that he had come to understand and know and the, the foundations that formed the basis for him to be properly equipped to do the work that he's, he does. I believe each one of us is also properly equipped for the work that each one of us is to do. So when I look back at my own life, I think of, oh, hmm. I was given certain skills throughout my life and I came to mastery in those skills. And then at one point, you know, they weren't really used at that moment, but they never were forgotten. But for me, people would say something about prayer and I would say, well, God called me to be a volunteer to sit at the bedside of the sick and the dying. And in order to do something like that, he had to give me certain gifts. And so you need to be able to listen deeply. You need to be able to sit in a place where it's a hard place to journey in companion with someone who's dying. But additionally, in order to be someone who can journey in companion with others who are going to die, and that there's going to be this incredible change in life Sometimes we pass from death to new life in our lives, but we never die. Our lives are so changed and transformed. We have to grieve and mourn the passing of what was because there's no going back. Absolutely no going back to what was. And with that foundation of there is no going back. It's the road behind us and the cross is ever before us. With that, what is helpful is volume 24, I'm sorry, volume 25, March 31st, 1929. For any of you who ever have ever read the the calendar and that every you know you'll look at oh well this is the calendar for march and everything in that in that volume it is all everything that was ever written in the book of heaven in the month of march and so today happens to be march 31st and this is also a reading for march 31st 1920 and 29 i didn't do any um because sometimes i do well, gee, was that an Easter day back then? Because, of course, Easter is a, mu a movable feast. Was it or was it not? I don't know. It could have been. And there's much in this writing as well. And I'm only going to share a very small portion of it. Um, what I intend to share with you at this moment in time is only two paragraphs, which is really a very, very small portion. And as always, I always suggest you go back and read the fullness of it. But for me, when you realize that God has a call on your life and he always has, and perhaps that call on your life, um, you didn't really understand it in the depths that perhaps you've come to understand it today. I 
I believe I was formed and that I was called by name in my mother's womb. Personal nugget of information about my own birth. I was a full breech baby, yes. A full breech baby means you're folded in half and you don't come out the natural way, but it was a natural birth and yeah, I, I backed into the world. <laughs> um, I'm still very flexible and I can still bend in half very easily. So, but with that, it was a very difficult birth for any woman who has a, a, a full breech birth uh, of, a, of a child. Louisa herself was full breech. You know, sometimes in this place, I think about a whale or even a pod of dolphins and how they breach and how, how God shows us in nature this stunning sight of what these incredible creatures that he is, he's made can do. I was driving home from my sisters this late this afternoon. It was starting to get towards dusk and I'm on, on a fairly busy highway. Uh, it's a four lane del divided at that point. And I was in it going by um, an area that was near a forest reserve area. And just to see two deer nearby the roadway and then a whole herd of them back behind in the woods. For me, that was so endearing. When God sends me something like deer, I think, oh, that was a sweetness. That was just two deer of him. And it was almost as if a special sweetness to me, you dear one. All right, too much of me. Let me get on to volume 25, March 31st, 1929. Therefore, I was to come to find man happy, holy, with the fullness of the goods with which I had created him. But because he wanted to do his will, he changed our destiny. And since it was decreed that I was to descend upon earth, and when the divinity decrees, no one can move it. I only changed the manner and the appearance. But I did not descend, though under most humble guises. I'm sorry, but I did descend, though under most humble guises. Poor, with no apparatus of glory, suffering and crying, and loaded with all the miseries and pains of man. The human will made me come to find man unhappy, blind, deaf, and mute, full of miseries. And I, in order to heal him, was to take them upon myself. And so as not to strike fear in them, I was to show myself as one of them, become their brother, and give them the medicines and the remedies that were needed. So the human will has the power to render man happy or unhappy, a saint or a sinner, healthy or sick. See then, if the soul decides always, always to do my divine will and to live in it, she will change her destiny. And my divine will will fling itself upon the creature. It will make her its prey and give her the kiss of creation. It will change appearance and manner, clasping her to its bosom. It will say to her, let us put everything aside. The first times of creation have come back for you and for me. Everything will be happiness 
between you and me. You will live in our house as our daughter in the abundance of the goods of your creator. So how does that happen? Well, it can happen uniquely and does happen uniquely for each one of you and us, me and you and everyone else or me. I made a choice one day. My life was changed. I spoke words and my life was changed. Others made choices and decisions and my life was changed. And there was a stripping and a changing of my life. For me, I said yes to God in 1998 and I returned to the church as an adult on Ash Wednesday, 1998. And on Easter Sunday in 1998, after the fullness of the Triduum, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday Vigil, early Sunday morning, Easter Sunday services, God made known to me of his fullness, of his presence, of this new life he was giving me on that day, on that Easter Sunday day, to touch me profoundly, that I would have a mystical experience. And later that day, in my deepest, darkest hour, I had another mystical experience where twice in the same day, the peace that surpassed all understanding coursed throughout my body, was given a special grace that day, because what was going to happen from that day moving forward is my very life was going to be changed irrevocably. The changes that were heart changes, a hardness of heart on another's heart, um, that there was a decision that was made and that it was going forward, that my life was going to be dismantled as I knew it. But here I am to say, we have death, meaning everything in our life changes. Yet at the same time, over time, everything in our life becomes new. We become a new creation in Christ. What happened for me during that triduum time and that Lent, that first adult Lent, in my lifetime, I became reconciled and God touched my life profoundly and there was no desire to ever turn away. Had I been tested, of course, we're all tested. He has to know that he can trust us with this incredible gift of this new life. Are we going to regress? Are we going to go back to patterns that are not pleasing to the Lord? Or are we gonna to continue to grow in wisdom, stature, and grace? Are we going to continue to move forward each and every day to do what God is asking us to do? What is that? Let me just start with the 10 commandments. He defines them. He says, don't change them. Don't buy into what society legislates or other people say it's acceptable. It's not in his book. <laughs> just saying. We ask the Lord to reconcile us. We ask for the grace that our confessors would have the light to, to understand what it is that we're trying to express and, and, and to confess. Um, if you're not aware of the chaplet and the novena to the Divine Mercy, it is on this channel and it's throughout the internet in many different places, but I do encourage you to please pray pray the chaplet to the Divine Mercy with the novena and the chaplet and that attend the services, the promises that are attached um, that Jesus had made that the church through 
our Holy Father, who is now St. John Paul II, and the indulgences that are attached to the Divine Mercy Sunday and to fully enter into what the church asks us and what Jesus himself promises, it's well worth the effort. If you're not aware, I strongly suggest. Um, it was in 1998 that I was first made known about the chaplet to the Divine Mercy in the Novena. It was just a simple booklet. And that was when I first began to pray the chaplet of Divine Mercy in the Novena to the Divine Mercy and to receive of those incredible graces. They are there when we want them, but we have to choose it. He gives us our freedom to say, well, you know, you can go ahead and continue to be unhappy. You can continue to be sick and tired, or you can come to me and we can work through everything that needs to be worked through. Might you receive spontaneous healing physically? If it's good for your soul and the soul of someone else, as the promises are attached to others when you pray bedside for the sick and dying as well, what God will do, he will always do what is best for the soul and what that soul wants for themselves and for others. So do I pray for the healing of my family, my family everywhere? Yes, I laid down my life in a chapel floor saying I was willing to die that my family be healed. And you and I are kin and we're family. I want you, I want your healing. Whatever, whatever level and depth that you want your healing, I want it too. And God wants it too. But there's certain things we must give up and, and, and surrender. There are certain things that we must turn over. And essentially what it is, it's we're turning over a new leaf, a, a new leaf, and we begin again. There's a man by the name of Richard Fragamini, a short um, man, uh, New Yorker, but out of the diocese, Archdiocese of Chicago, Our Lady of Pompeii Shrine in Chicago, Illinois. And he talks about the sacramental life and dying Easter eggs. And he says, remember when you were young and how many times you had to dip the egg in order for it to be a bright, vibrant color. He says the sacramental life of the church is like that dipping and dying and rising and dipping and dying and rising. So you think about our, our Easter eggs today. Okay, we got to go ahead and live that sacramental life. And we, we need to be prepared and be properly disposed. And Jesus helps us with that. But he knows if we really want it. And I trust that if you're here, you do. Boy. <laughs> so what can I say? God is so gracious and God is so merciful. And um, he's in charge and I'm not. In God's merciful love. Let us pray a command. Let's pray a unity prayer first. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hands beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. O oh, blessed lady, spread the effect of grace, thy flame of love over all of humanity. Also the command for Abba Father, in the name of Jesus, in the unity and power of the Holy Spirit, under the mantle of Mary, with all the angels and saints, through the intercession of the servant of God, Luisa Picaretta, Take my humble prayer and make it your command that all be accomplished and completed in your most holy divine will. We believe, we receive, fiat, amen. Once again, thank you for joining me today. We will pray the rounds of the soul, the 23rd round in the divine will, the resurrection. Jesus, my divine conqueror, you now depart from limbo along with the whole host of the souls of all the just and proceed to the sepulcher to conquer death by making your most sacred humanity rise from the dead. What a solemn moment it is. I therefore place my I love you upon the sepulcher in your act of rising from the dead 
place my I love you. Also upon the light and glory that surround your risen body to implore the resurrection of the divine will within the human will. May we all resurrect in you. Or do you not wish to grant me what I ask that you have deposited within yourself? Whence I entreat you by virtue of your resurrection to breathe upon every soul and by means of your omnipotent breath to draw to yourself the human will whereby your divine will may resurrect glorious and victorious within the human will. O oh, my Jesus, after rising from the dead, you do not immediately go to heaven. You're choosing to remain with your children on earth for no less than 40 days is the confirmation that you will indeed establish the kingdom of your divine will on earth. Wherefore, I shall not leave you, but will follow you step by step with my I love you as you appear in your risen state to your mother. And by virtue of the joy you shared, I entreat you along with the sovereign queen to grant us the kingdom of your fiat. May I love you. My, I love you, accompanies you as you appear to Mary Magdalene and to the apostles to, to beseech you to make your divine will known to priests so that as new apostles, they may make it known to all the world. So in the beginning of the program, I shared with you the footnote and the readings that were shown in Father Anutzi's Divine Will Prayer Book. In his great mercy and love, now is the acceptable hour, now is the acceptable time. This is the day of salvation. The day you want it, no exceptions. You want him. To have his way with you. Because you fully and completely trust in him. There are songs throughout my life. For instance, I do not know how to love him. Um, and that we're willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause, to climb mountains, to have this impossible dream with Jesus. It's not impossible. He would never give us the Our Father prayer if it was not attainable. Father, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he says, do you really mean it? Do you really want my will? Or are you still holding on to parts and pieces of your small? I don't want to give that up. I still want that. Whatever that is. For me, it might have been... Hmm. I'll share with you my Easter dinner tonight, or my, my Easter meal today. There was a full, pretty balanced meal planned. But what happened? Mm. Well, I guess maybe we were hungry, so we first snacked. <laughs> Not necessarily high-quality snacks, but, but yummy snacks. And then there was a beautiful salad, and it was, it was good nutrition. It was pretty simple and it had a lot of variety in it and not a whole lot of green and not a whole lot of vegetable, but it was a really good salad. And then there was that main part of like, oh, ham and broccoli. 
well, you know, after we had the salad, we hadn't started to do anything with the ham yet or the broccoli. I, I did this little rabbit kind of thing that happens with me. It's like, you know, I like the beginnings and I like the endings, sometimes the middle part. So yeah, <laughs> of course that's where most of the nutrition is. But I said to my sister, you know, what do you think about just going to dessert? Having some coffee and having the flourless chocolate cake with some ice cream. She said, oh, I'm all on it. <laughs> so <laughs> we had a beautiful salad and we split a bottle of wine and we had a beautiful dessert. And um, I was able to get home here in this place in order to do a live program. Because <laughs> at that point, I was like, is it going to happen today or is it not going to happen today? I guess it depends on how things go. And so um, my sister was all open to it and I was all open to it. So I have I have ham that she sent home with me. And well, we both had broccoli that was frozen and we'll cook it on our own. But we shared a beautiful afternoon, uh, a, a portion of the afternoon together. And I hope you also shared a portion of uh, or the fullness of your day with your family. Um, my day started with sharing um, the closing songs from the 8 a.m. Mass, um, sharing breakfast following that with the group of people who did sing in the 8 o'clock Mass, and then singing at the 10.30, and then going to my sister's. So um, it is an Alleluia day. It is a season of Easter tide. And know that um, there are tremendous blessings on Divine Mercy Sunday. I do intend to be here next Sunday for Divine Mercy Sunday. I also plan on attending the fullness and, and doing all um, of what the church asks us uh, for the, all of the indulgences and the promises that are attached to the devotion to the Divine Mercy um, the culmination of the novena and continuing to, to pray the chaplet frequently for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, that they too may receive graces and blessings. I thank you for your time today. I thank you for your faithfulness. Once again, if you're new to the channel, um, I'm grateful that you're here. If you've been with us for the longest time, I too am grateful for your constancy and your support. As always, please subscribe to the channel, set notifications, and if you find value here, please do like and share the video. It was a little bit more um, personable, meaning I shared um, publicly outside of just my small groups, just a very small part of my life, but God does call us to new risen life. And despite how ugly and how difficult and how challenging and how painful it might be to let go of what was in order to take a step in faith, perhaps a blind step in trusting and believing that God will lead us. He is faithful and he can be fully trusted. May your family, may you and all of your loved ones and may a blessing, a newness of life with each new dawn of each new day come to, come to descend upon us and may we grow in the gift of living in the divine will as it all begins with desire. May Almighty God bless us, protect us, and bring us to everlasting life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy, and thank you all the many others that are here. God bless you. Hey, Karen, thank you. Fiat. Happy Easter. You gladden my heart. Thank you so much.